Hello everyone, Scott Geil from McMillan. Thank you for joining us today. I have been with McMillan for a little over 17 years, the last four years in specifically in the digital area. In recent years, we've seen a huge increase in the interest in using digital technology in class and also a huge interest in integrating that digital technology with campus learning management systems such as Desire to Learn slash Brightspace. We really appreciate your time today and we are thrilled to have Christy Dykema from Front Range College here to present her experience with D2L and Launchpad. Before I introduce Christy, please do note on the screen if you need to connect to the audio, this is how. Uh, also in the left corner of your of your WebEx screen, you should see a button called Communicate. Under that, there are audio options. Had this pre-prepared integration between D2L and Launchpad in it. Uh, one of the things that we know is that instructors cover a wide variety of ability levels and um, with regards to technology. And so we wanted to make sure that all instructors, regardless of whether or not they've used technology a lot in their courses or if they don't use much technology, they had this template that they could at least start with this integration of using D2L and Launchpad together. So that's what we wanted to provide to them. The audience for this project was all the psychology faculty members and instructors teaching Psychology 101 and Psychology 102 on our campus. 101 and 102 actually use the same textbook, but it's split up into two different portions because it covers a wide variety of units. And then in terms of our methodology, basically what happened was over the last summer, I pre-built a course shell with fully functioning D2L and Launchpad integration that was rolled out to faculty and instructors um, in August, so right before classes started. Uh, the reason that it was so close to the beginning of the semester was that the textbook was literally brand new, and so this D2L and Launchpad was brand new for them. But this course shell provided all major possible Launchpad activities that faculty and instructors could choose from to customize their course. So the main goal was that I wanted to give them all the resources that I thought were going to be helpful to students in learning the material, and then they could pick and choose what they thought was most beneficial to them in their own course. So in terms of what I'm gonna to talk to you about today, first I'm gonna show you the course shell setup and how I went about doing that for our instructors. And then I'm gonna show you the instructor side of things, uh, what they had to do to basically take this master course shell and make it their own. And then I'll flip over and show you the student experience really quickly and how we um, made sure that it was sort of seamless for the students as much as possible. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about some troubleshooting issues that we had over the course of this first semester of integration. So to jump right into it, the first thing I wanna mention is that I did set up master course shells that rolled out to all faculty and instructors. So as you can see here, this is my D2L, my courses section. I just highlighted for the what they call the master semester where all of these courses go into. As you can see for Psych 101 and Psych 102, there's a master course shell and then you'll see a master copy for each of those courses. I found this to be really important um, in terms of setup because what happens is once you create this course, you give all the faculty and instructors access as an instructor in your course, which means that technically they could change things. And so if you have an instructor go in there and they're not quite sure what they're doing and they accidentally delete something, at least you have that copy as a backup. Um, the only problem I had this semester with something like that happening is an instructor actually copied the entire course. So everything appeared as double and it was really easy to go in and just delete whatever was a double. But in case anything gets massively deleted, you can go back to your copy and use that as a backup. So jumping into my course shell, I'm only gonna show you the Psych 101 course shell because 101 and 102 are largely the same except for the content, but the setup is pretty much the same. The first thing that I needed to do when I decided to take on this project was to figure out how I wanted the organization to occur because essentially what we wanted was 
for every instructor, we wanted something that was pretty much comparable to if you took Psychology 101 with Instructor A versus Instructor B, that all the content kind of looked fairly similar. So what I did in terms of the content is that I separated it out into units based on the chapters that we covered. So for 101, we covered eight different chapters essentially, and so I separated it out into eight different units. However, when you go into the course shelf for the very first time, this notice is actually for instructors because instructors are the people that have the first access to this. So this notice is something that students don't ever see. It's sort of at the back end of things and instructors change this once they do it. But it's basically talking about, you know, don't uh, make any changes to the master course shelf. I was very paranoid about that. And then it gives them the steps on what they need to do in terms of setting up their course, step-by-step -step process, including a handbook that's linked right here that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. And then if they have any questions, my contact information so that they can ask questions about whatever they need help with. And then at the beginning of the semester, slightly before actually, we offer a workshop to our faculty and instructors if they need help setting up their integration course shell that we will sit with them. And uh, Worth Publishers was really good about making sure to have representatives to come in and sit down with uh, myself and the instructors that needed help in doing so. So that's kind of what the instructors see as they start. In terms of what I did over the summer, uh, basically I looked at the new textbook, I looked at Launchpad, and I looked at the activities that were offered as sort of student resources, and I picked and choose what I thought was gonna be most beneficial to students. One of the big things was we didn't wanna overwhelm instructors who weren't as used to technology, so we just picked the most important things in terms of student learning, essentially. Um, Real quickly, I do want to show you how easy it is to load content into the, um, the D2L from the launch pad. So what you do is you go ahead and uh, it might be different based on what version of Brightspace you have. This is specific to our version of Brightspace, but you go into the course builder and I've got a demonstration module set up so I can just delete it at the end of this without messing anything up. But essentially what you do is this is my demonstration module. It could be unit one, unit two, whatever unit you wanna choose. And then you take the Macmillan flag, you drop it into the demonstration module right here. And then you go ahead and you pick whatever resource you want to do. So let's say I really wanna add Appendix B, um, the industrial organizational psychology. Let's say we'll add this. We'll add a quiz, and then you just click Deploy Selected Content. And then it says we've successfully added that into our course shell. So I'll go back up into the content and down to my demonstration module, and you can see it drops that in automatically into where I wanted it to go. It's literally as easy as clicking and choosing what you want to deploy. Once you have your integration set up, you just drag and drop things into that. Um, so it's fairly easy. In terms of um, understanding what all you need in order to do this, I'm gonna show you that it's basically linking your launch pad with your D2L. So it's sort of a single sign-on process. In fact, uh, this semester I used this over the summer. I don't even think I remember my Launchpad password because it's all done within this course shell now. I don't have to worry about signing into Launchpad. Um, I don't have to worry about you know trying to manage both Launchpad and D2L. It's very, very seamless within D2L. I always access Launchpad through D2L now. So that's kind of how you load the content. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you is what the instructors look at. So as I said, when you go to, um, let's see, go to the home page here, it says stop, you know, don't make any changes. And then right here, I linked to the instructor handbook. You can also find this in the content section. 
So if you look in the table of contents, the way that I set it up is I have a getting started module. There's a few different things. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit more of this later because this is more of the student side of what they're seeing and how they get signed on. Uh, we have a psych lab on our campus. So this is uh, front range specific that I put in there so that instructors have access to that. And then there's some specific stuff for our online students that instructors have access. We also have an ebook uh, quick link here. Uh, we require APA papers within our courses. So there's a bunch of writing resources that I put in there for um, front range students to use, including our library and things like that. And then every unit has uh, ebook readings, psych sim activities, think like a scientist, and learning curve activities, which I'll show you a little bit more about that later. But if we scroll all the way down, the last module that I had in here was the instructor resources. So this is set in D2L for uh, draft. So instructors are the only ones with access to this. This is not something that students see. And we found that to be important because we have things like uh, test bank questions and things like that in here. So when instructors are um, going into the course shell, they're instructed to go here first and to learn what they need to do. They also have a bunch of different resources that are available to them. They have general instructor resources, which are things like, um, you know, uh, front range specific, like what they need to do if they have a sub or anything like that. There's a bunch of different videos for D2L, helping them to set up D2L. There's test banks that are provided by the book publishers so that they can pull that. That's in the form of a zip drive so or a zip file. So I also have instructions on how to use a zip file. Uh, also launch pad resources specific. And then every uh, unit is separated into specific resources. And these resources are things like, um, you know, the test bank questions. There are things like, um, let me just go ahead and go in here for you. Uh, okay, there are things like the lecture guides that the book publisher offers, the lectures, so the PowerPoint, the image slides. If they use eye clickers, they have eye clicker questions, all of those different types of things. So these are all preloaded for instructors to use per unit. But what they are instructed to do first is to use the instructor handbook. And the instructor handbook was actually created by me, and this is specific to the version of Brightspace that we have. So what I basically did was when I set up the integration of this master course shell, I went through and I screenshotted everything that I could possibly think of, and I provided detailed instructions that were specific towards what our version of D2L looks like for our instructors so that they can go and they can just do a step-by-step -step process and they see exactly what they need to see. So when this was turned over to them, their first task was to copy the course. So they're instructed to, okay, this is your course, this is the master course shell, go in and import all of the components. Um, I showed them what course offering that they had to type in specifically to copy that course in, so that there were no guesses about what to do, what buttons to click, and then if for 102 instructors, I showed them the same thing. And then I showed them to copy all components, and it's very important that for this method that they copy all components, because this actually brings in all the quick links to Launchpad. So once they um, associate their course, all those quick, link, quick links work just the same as what they work like um, in my course shell, which I'll show you in a little bit here. So shows you how to do that. Their second task was to connect Launchpad to the D2L course shell. So my master course is set up to Launchpad, but it's set up to my course within Launchpad. So each instructor has to go through and has to associate their course, their D2L course, into their specific Launchpad course and associate those two so they talk together. So I instructed them how to do this in the instructor resources and specifically in the Launchpad resource sub-module. There's something called the Macmillan Course Tools Launch and they're instructed to click on that. And again, this is all preloaded for them so they automatically see this when they go in. When they click on that, they click Getting Started and then there's a sign up registration screen that happens. Um, they type in their email that the book publisher has, and then they put in their publisher, or not their publisher, I'm sorry, their password right here. 
they click authenticate, they click continue, they click continue again, then they create a new course, they select, you know, the book that they're using, we're using Discovering Psychology 7E, they type in their course title, their course number, section number, their instructor name, and then the term and the time zone, and they create a new course. And it's as simple as that, and then they can basically link that up. I also gave them instructions on if um, they're teaching more than one section of, let's say I'm teaching two sections of Psych 101, uh, the publishers have done a really nice job of giving very, very detailed instruction, instructions in the instructor knowledge base about how to do this with screenshots. So it basically is a matter of branching your course, and once you branch your course, you basically are able to have all your edits done in one launch pad, and it separates out into two courses. So I provided those instructions to them if they um, require them if they're teaching more than one course. The next thing that they were instructed to do was to explore the preloaded content. Again, I loaded all the content I thought was going to be important from Launchpad into the D2L master shell. So this just talks about what those different sub-modules are, what are the different components that are available to you. So I walked them through the Getting Started module, um, the literature review, which I provided to them for their papers, all the unit folders and the specific things that are available within their unit folders. I gave them a brief description about what those activities were like so they could kind of choose whether or not they wanted to take a look at it or if it was a little too overwhelming for them at that point, and then the instructor resources and what was available to them. Basically, in terms of customizing the course, the way that I decided to go about it was that it would be easier for an instructor who didn't have a lot of tech-savvy knowledge to delete something rather than add something in, even though you could see how easy it was to add something in. So I provided them everything I could think of, and then their instructions were to delete anything they didn't want to use. And I had some instructors say, well, gee, I don't want to assign this, but I really want this available to my students and organize the way that you have it. And that's great. You just keep that in, and you just never assign it within Launchpad, and it never has a point value to it. So instructors were basically told, if you see something you don't want, for, so for instance, you know, online students, maybe this is a face-to-face -face class, go ahead and delete that module. If you decide that you don't want to do the psych sim activities, you can go ahead and delete that uh, sub-module. Then they're instructed to do a couple of different things that are specific towards front range that are required of our D2L course shells, like they have to have their syllabus in there, they have to have a welcome message, which actually is changing that welcome message to um, something specific to the course so it never it doesn't say stop anymore. And then the last task is to connect Launchpad due dates with the gradebook in D2L, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to assign something and how it automatically populates to the D2L course shell. So that's kind of what we instructed instructors to do, so they could kind of walk through that step-by-step -step process. Again, this is specific to our um, version of D2L so that everything that they see in this instruction manual they see within their course shell. So real quick, I want to show you um, how easy it is to assign something. So if you look in here, Unit 1, for instance. If you look in a Unit 1, I provided all the different readings. I provided something called Psych Sim 6 activities, which are interactive activities. And then Think Like a Scientist activities, which are also interactive, and then Learning Curve activities. A lot of different books have Learning Curve. Learning Curve is an adaptive quizzing feature. So students, if they're getting a lot of questions right in a certain area, it will stop quizzing them over that because they know that information. And if they don't, then it will keep quizzing them over that. So just to show you really quickly what this looks like. As you notice, when I click on it in my course shell, it automatically comes into Launchpad. Uh, that is because these two are associated, and this is what it looks like for instructors every single time, and this is what it looks like for students every single time. So once you associate Launchpad with your D2L account, 
you automatically click on anything and you automatically go into Launchpad. So students never actually have to go to the Launchpad website. They can access it all through D2L and it's the same for instructors. So as you can see, this is learning curve. I'll just preview it as a student real quick so you can see what this looks like. Uh, again, it's adaptive. So uh, you have a question. I'm just going to choose a random answer here and then the student got it wrong. What happens is that it provides the ebook page on the topic that the student can go to and the system remembers, okay, the student didn't get this question right in this little segment. I need to make sure to ask them more questions about it. And then they continue to go through like that. As you can see, there's a scoring system up at the top. And so students basically quiz until they hit a certain score. And this score you can actually adjust if you want to make it harder or if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can adjust it. Um, but the default is 300. And there's some research behind that that um, some people were explaining to me about how long it takes students and um, how, how much it's related to achievement. So you can change it or you can keep it at 300. What happens is when a student gets those 300 points, if you assign it, it's an all or none system for that. So I'll show you the assign feature real quick. This is what it looks like for the instructor. If I wanted to assign that learning curve activity, I just basically click on assign. I'll click on the date that I want it to do. Let's say I want to have it do the 26th. I have a couple different options here. If I want to send an email reminder or if I want to allow late submissions. And then I can set the point value. It gives you full credit on completion. That's um, basically your only option because it's you get that 300 points or you don't get that 300 points. You can also categorize it as uncategorized or create a new category. If you create a new category, when it pushes it over to the gradebook, it will push it over within that category. So if you like to stay organized, it really helps with that. And then you just click Assign. And then the item assignment has been saved. It will notify the students in their launch pad that this is due. And then it will also populate to the gradebook, which I can't show you because the gradebook in this master course shell is actually not set up because we don't have any students. But it automatically populates over into that gradebook so that you can see those grades. Um, one thing that I have seen instructors um, have a problem with with regards to troubleshooting is sometimes they don't see that populating into their gradebook and usually the easiest fix is that number one, maybe they didn't wait enough time because there is a time delay for grades to populate within the gradebook. I'm not sure how, it is, how long it is, um, but it could be that. Or it could just be a matter of you have to go into your, um, let me get the uh, launch pad resources, and then your course tools launch. And there's actually a grade refresh in here that you can refresh the grade so that it updates into your course. Uh, the same thing I've noticed with um, sometimes uh, an instructor will say, you know, I loaded something in terms of the content into my course, like maybe I assigned um, a reading from the ebook and I dropped it in even though it wasn't preloaded, but I don't see it. It's as simple as hitting the Macmillan content refresh and then choosing which content you want to um, change in your course and then updating it. Otherwise, there's just a little bit of a time delay in terms of what content is going where. But, you know, if I wanted to, let's say, you know, there's a lot of different content already loaded in here, but let's say I can't find chapter one prologue. I don't think it's in there. I just click on that and then I click refresh content link. Um, if you're refreshing all of these content links, I tell people to go get a cup of coffee because it will take a while. So that's what it looks like in terms of assigning, kind of the instructor side of things. In terms of the student experience, let me go ahead and go to view as a student. When a student comes in, again, this is a news feed that hopefully the instructor has changed for them. In terms of the content, this is what they see here. So they don't see the instructor resources anymore. But what we tell them is to go to the getting started. And the most important part of this is how do I get Launchpad into my D2L course shell? 
So these links are specific to students. They were provided in this nice format by the book publishers. So you can click on the link to connect to the D2L account in Launchpad. Um, if I clicked on it, since it's already connected, it's going, it's going to say that it's already connected. But there's also a link for instructions for students. And it's, there's also a link if you've already registered your Launchpad access outside of D2L and you need to get your D2L account linked to Launchpad. And then, of course, there's the live chat 24-7. A couple other health links are available there as well. And then the frequently asked questions, there's the instructor knowledge base and the student knowledge base, which basically has answers to any question that you possibly could use. So that's pretty much the sign up process for students. Once they sign up through Launchpad, they everything they click on within Launchpad automatically acknowledges that this student goes to this Launchpad account. So it's really nice for students. They don't have to worry about managing two different accounts or anything like that. The other thing uh, that I've noticed in terms of, you know, setting this up, I, I do have to say that that instructor handbook that I gave out to instructors has been extremely beneficial in terms of making things easier for me with questions and answers, because most of the time if they follow those steps, they're going to have no problems at all with their integration. And if they do have a problem, it's something that's probably specific to their course. Like I said, content not appearing, grades not appearing are probably the number two questions I have, and they're very easy to solve. Other things that have happened have been kind of um, instructor-specific things where an instructor wants to do something a little bit different, and I might not have the answers for that if I try to troubleshoot with them. So one of the things that has been really great is that um, Brian has been available um, pretty much at all times for me to be able to refer my instructors to him, and he will get on with them, he will look at their screen, he'll show them what to do, and he'll work with them online to be able to solve their problems uh, with a webinar type feature where I'm always invited if I wanna drop in and see how he's doing things. So he's been a very, very valuable asset to me as well through this process. So that's pretty much the overview that I have for you. So I think we're going to turn it over to Brian to talk to you a little bit and then turn over to Q&A. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. Brian. Brian. Are you, Are you uh, uh, connected? connected. The audio, the audio. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. My, name My name is Brian Clubsall, and, and I am an E2L integration, integration specialist, specialist with Nicknell. Nick so just so like, just like Christy said, said, I have been, I have been working with, um, with um, Christy throughout the throughout entire, throughout the entire semester, semester to help her and her, help her and her instructors set up the courses, up the courses to, their to their preferences, and I can extend, I can extend the same type of type of services to you as well should you decide to use an integration. Brian, Brian I, I'm not sure, I, I'm not what, sure your what your connection is, is but you're echoing pretty badly. Brian, 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 Brian. Uh, Christy, do you mind muting you yourself, yourself, yourself for a minute? Oh, yes, of course. Let me... Uh... I got it. Is that better? Infinitely. Great. Sorry, guys. So, um... Just a couple of examples of how I have helped out with some faculty because it doesn't just – the service that we offer should you decide to integrate content like Launchpad with your learning management system, in this case D2L, um, we will work with you to help you set up these courses to your preferences, whether you're just teaching one section or a couple of sections by yourself, or if you're doing what, what Christy did, which is setting up this master course for all faculty to be able to use. We provide the same level of service. And I just wanted to give some examples, actually, of how like, we keep this collaborative nature with some real examples of some questions that Christie's faculty have actually come to me where I've learned a little bit more even about how the integration works. Um, Scott, do you mind if I share my screen for a minute? Not at all. Let me just uh, get to that point and give you access. There you go. On its way. Perfect. So this is an example of a D2L gradebook with content that's also been linked up. So if we go to the Manage Grades, I have synced up two assignments 
with my D2L gradebook from Launchpad. And one of Christie's faculty members, they emailed me, and it was a very basic question. They were just frustrated because the way that the activities looked in the D2L gradebook, they couldn't distinguish between this learning curve and this learning curve because they looked exactly the same. And they kept trying to make changes to the title, but it kept refreshing during the auto updates that happened between the connection between D2L and Launchpad. So we got on a quick call, and what we learned was, which is actually something that I didn't know before I actually met with this instructor was, D2L has something called a short name. So what we learned was if I just go here and just abbreviate the name like so and click save, we can now see very clearly which learning curve is which. I can even do the same thing for this one just so you can distinguish the two. And there we go, problem solved. We also tested this and we learned that the activities um, stay with these settings throughout the entire integration process. So it's a very collaborative nature in terms of what we offer, offer in terms of service between faculty and ourselves. We wanna work with you on a consulting basis to really help you achieve what you're trying to do in your courses and customize this content to the way that you see fit. Thank you, Brian. We do have a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, the first one is, does Launchpad have an e-text? And indeed, yes, 99% of the Launchpads do offer an e-text. Uh, this is a picture of what Launchpad looks like not integrated. And it is the e-text along with all manner of different resources. The learning curve adaptive quizzing that Christy showed, uh, animation. Scott, can you share your screen? Oh, yes, thank you. Can you see it now? So there is an e-text along with all manner of different resources, such as the learning curve, adaptive quizzing, animations, videos, positive uh, quizzing. The resources do vary depending on which text you use, but the e-text is a consistent, it's always in there. Uh, another question that we had was about purchase options. And the question about purchase options was, how do my students purchase Launchpad? And there's a couple of ways. Number one, we package with any of our texts a Launchpad code for free. And so the students can purchase in the bookstore at no extra cost over a new book, a Launchpad access code. They can also purchase a code alone in the bookstore, or they can do a direct purchase from us, very similar to the way they would direct purchase an e-text, but it's not just an e-text, it's an e-text in all the resources. Uh, in addition to all of that, there is a 21-day temp access period. The students get, all students can get 21-day free access to Launchpad resources, textbook, everything through your D2L integration. So there's never an excuse for a student to not have the resources on the first day of class. And they have time if they're waiting on financial aid, if they're waiting on a paycheck, if they're just trying to determine if having digital only access is going to fit for them, they have 21 days free access. Um, next question, uh, this seems to be more for Christy. Did all your faculty have prior tech experience before using this integration? I would say oh, that I, I, there's I, I, a pretty wide range of technology experience among the faculty and instructors. There are some that really required no help and they were able to do this mostly on their own, all the way to people who have never really used uh, D2L very much or any technology very much that required a lot more assistance. But I would say with the way that we set things up, it worked really good for all of those um, different variabilities in tech levels so that the people who just, you know, were able to do it on their own, they took that course shell and they're like, great, this is all I need, and I never heard from them the rest of the semester. To people who I was working with, you know, on a more day-to-day -day basis at the beginning of the semester, 
um, until they got things ironed out. So I would say that this process worked pretty well for people who are all different tech levels. I believe this I question, believe this question is off of Chris off of Chris as well. How do you choose, do you choose the, content the content from Launchpad? From Launchpad? So in choosing the Launchpad content, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to choose the content that I thought was going to be most appropriate for student achievement um, and give that to faculty and instructors first because I didn't want to overwhelm them with a lot of different material. So what I did was I actually went into Launchpad as soon as all of the activities were available and I went and I did learning curve myself and I took a look at, okay, do I think that this is going to be beneficial to students? Um, you know, my background in educational psychology kind of helped feed into that. And so each little component of that, I actually had a hand in looking at specifically and playing the role of the student to see, will this help with student engagement? Will this help with student achievement and uh, learning? So that's pretty much how I chose that content. And I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm going, going to as, as you speak, as you speak. The next question, um, can or will you share, share the handbook that you referenced? I can share the good. The only thing I caution is that we do use a specific version of Brightspace. In fact, before I uh, was teaching at Front Range, it was very different from the Brightspace platform that I was used to. And so some of the things in that handbook are going to be specific towards the D2L that we have. However, the instructor knowledge base that I referenced, um, that has been very valuable in terms of questions that faculty and instructors have and walking you through those processes that you want to do. So, of course, yeah, I'd be happy to share it. Uh, you just have to take that caveat in mind. And this is Katie Stone from Macmillan. I just want to emphasize, want to emphasize that we do have, we do have by step instructions on the full integration and, and launchpad setup process, as well as a suite of videos uh, that, that you can use in a self help fashion. And then uh, Brian and I and others from our team will also work with you on a consultative basis to help integrate your course. I think, unless you guys are seeing any additional questions, I believe that's the, the, all the questions that we've gotten. Uh, I just want to emphasize, again, I, I apologize for some of the echo that was happening. Hopefully people were able to hear through that. Um, if you're interested in setting up an integration, we will be sending a follow-up email, and the instructions will be in there. You can also go ahead and email one of these two gentlemen right away, and they could get you started. Uh, as Brian shared, we have dedicated integration specialists. That's all these guys do is they help with integrations and they make sure that the integrations that we do are working as, as well as they possibly can. And, and, I, and I don't say that in a, in a negative way. It's all they do. They're integration specialists dedicated to you, the instructor, and making sure that this works for you. Of course, there's tech support as well, but you, to get the integration going and answer questions, you won't have to call an anonymous tech support. You'll work with one of these guys or a guy from there or a person from their team. Uh, Casey and Brian, if there's anything else that you want to add? Uh, no, that was great. If you're unfamiliar with Launchpad and also and interested in uh, learning more about Launchpad, especially from whatever discipline you teach in, we also have a, a team of specialists that can help you from a discipline-specific uh, pedagogical standpoint. We'd be happy to connect you with them, too. Again, if you're not familiar with Launchpad and would like to learn out, learn more and find out like what works really for your specific, uh, what, what specific discipline you teach in. There, there's a, I'm showing a site right here. Uh, it, it's called launchpadworks.com. It's not, you don't have to type in this complicated URL. If you type in launchpadworks.com, you'll get to this site. It's an overview. It's videos about Launchpad. It's a way for you to browse and find specific uh, 
titles that may apply to courses you are teaching. So if you're interested in finding out more about Launchpad, launchpadworks.com. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful holiday season. And we'll be following up with a recording link and information next week. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Christy. And thank you, Christy, very much.